Hello and welcome to my video. I am Drasco Sandino and I'm doing this video for the project for Odysseus competition and I'm doing this with my friend Christos Muro. Uh, this video is about the ion thruster and the EM drive. Hope you like this. NASA's Glenn has been developing the next generation of ion thrusters for future missions. NASA's evolutionary xenon thruster, or NEXT for short, project has developed a 5 kW ion thruster that can provide the capacity needed in the future. An ion thruster produces small levels of thrust related to chem chemical rockets, but an ion thruster has a fuel efficiency of 10 to 12 times greater than a chemical thruster. The higher the rockets of fuel efficiency, the farther the spacecraft can go with given amount of fuel. Given that an ion thruster produces small levels of thrust relative to chemical thrusters, it needs to operate in excess of 10,000 hours to slowly accelerate to speeds necessary to reach the stars. The next ion thruster has been operated for over 43,000 hours, which for rocket scientists means that the thruster has proceed over 770 kilograms for, of xenon propellant and can provide 30 million newton per second of total impulse to the spacecraft. But how does the ion thruster work? An ion thruster ionizes propellant by adding or removing electrons to produce ions. Most thrusters ionize propellant by electroporphyrin. A high energy electron negative charge collides with a propellant atom neutral charge and releasing electrons from the propellant atom uh, resulting in a positive charge ion. The positive charge ions come out of the screen electrode when the acceleration electrode, therefore pushing it to accelerate to tremendous speed. As the positive charge ions float behind the spacecraft and neutralizes ejects out the electrons to neutralize the positive charge ions so they do not go back in the ship. The most common propellant used in ion propulsion is xenon, which is easily ionized and has a high atomic mass, thus generating a desirable level of thrust when ions are accelerated. So after all this, why don't we use ion thrusters for our space missions? Well, the ion thrusters produce 91 million newtons of force at maximum throttle it will take 4 days to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour. So that's all for the ion thruster. Now it's time for the incredible EM drive. The inventor Roger Scheuer, an electrical engineer, claims that the electromagnetic drive or the EM drive can be the next step in technology. The EM drive can provide us with a fast space ship that can take us to Mars in just 10 weeks. Current space aviation technology will normally allow this travel in 6 months. Regarding a trip to Alpha Centauri, the home to the possible Earth-like planet Proxima b, will take 92 years while using current technology will take millions of years. Also, it will give us flying cars, unlimited energy and solve the global warming crisis, according to Roger. But how is this really work? Here on Earth, we get around with the help of friction, a car's wheels pushing in the road to make it move forward. The problem in space, there is nothing to push off, that's why we need a propeller. According to Newton's third law, where every action has an equal and opposite reaction, but the EM drive is a proposed a new way of propelling without a propeller, making the spacecraft much lighter, cheaper and faster. The basis of EM drive is a metal cylinder drum where the microwave photons will be bouncing around inside in millions of times a second. As the photons bounce back and forth, they generate a small pushing force on each end of the drum. Because of relativistic effects, this shape will create an imbalance in the bouncing force and push the whole drum from the inside. This pushing from within is what breaks Newton's law. According to Roger Scheuer, wave particles duality of the photons that as they collide in the chamber, the waveform engage in destructive interference which cancels out their electromagnetic energy but allows the photons to pass through the chamber wall, thus emitting a tiny amount of energy and creating thrust. A test has been made by a NASA crew 
led by Harold Sonny White, and after a year-long review process, the paper describing the work has been published in the Journal of Propulsion and Power. It describes how the NASA team measured a thrust of about 1.2 million newtons per kilowatt from the controversial EM drive, though they are at a loss to explain how. The measured force is tiny but still more than 100 times stronger than that generated by a solar sail. The total force exerted on a solar sail may be around 1 newton or less, along with spacecraft propelled by electric engines. In three years, a solar sail could reach speeds of 240,000 kilometers per hour. So imagine if EM drive generated continuously, even one million newton could be enough to propel a spacecraft to tremendous speed, given enough time. After the papers of the EM drive test, Naha said that the EM drive seems to work on paper and they are going to do more tests because it has the potential to work. Other tests has also been made. For example, in 2012, a team of Chinese scientists from the Northwest Polytechnical University in Xi'an reported measuring a large net thrust, 720 million newtons at 2500 watts of input power. However, they later realized that this measurement was an error streaming from a dodgy power cable. So they repeated their experiment in early 2016 and the results were known. In another test in 2015, a German group led by Martin Dashmar at the University of Dresden also tested an EM drive device in a vacuum. They did measure a thrust but in several directions besides the intended one. Dashmar concluded this to be a null result. If the EM drive works, this would be a massive step for science and space exploration. It will help us get a better understanding on the creation and expansion of the universe. Even if it breaks the laws of physics, we do not have a 100% understanding of the universe and how it works. All the sources are in the video description. I hope you like this video. Until the next time, goodbye.